Hello everyone! So, um, earlier I made some videos and we were talking about a vintage lace quilt that I was making from some sort of gauzy antique lace dressing gowns. And I shot a bunch of footage because I was going to do it one way, but as I got into the project I wasn't happy with the way I was doing it, so I made some changes on the fly. Not sure how much of that video is still applicable. So today we're going to look at making these little mitered corner pillows and film this step of the process. And honestly, this is a lot of what goes into that quilt. So once we get done with this little video clip, the rest of it should come together pretty quickly. I've got my seven by seven square. And even though this is flannel, I can still see the grid lines of my little pressing surface here. So I have centered this over a seven by seven area. And then using these grid lines as a guide, I can quickly kind of do this with um, no tripod, um, place my center insert along a set of lines. And that helps me quickly center this and make sure it's not skewed. Um, make sure I don't have it at an angle. So it helps me quickly see where I am and line that up. And then the next step is I will press down these four sides and mark and create my grid lines. I'll take your hot iron and I'm going to fold this outer layer to the inner layer, just flush against there and press it down. Not ironing. And then we just work our way around doing exactly the same thing. And once you have your four sides pressed in and you're sort of making this package, I am going to mark the intersection where this fold touches the side. And then if I lift the flap, this other one right where they touch. So I'm marking this corner on both layers, the top layer and the bottom layer. Because nothing is perfect in vintage sewing, you're going to have to use your judgment. You're going to have to do a little check and adjust there, but that gives you a good starting point. And what my pressing has done is mark this perfect five inch square so what I'll be looking for when I go to the sewing machine is this pressed corner here where the two folds have crossed and then the blue dots that I've done with my water erasable. At this stage, you should expect a little bit of trial and error. None of this is going to line up perfectly, so uh, do your best. So the next step is to fold these right sides together, make a little point at the corner, and what you're looking for is this creased point here where you're going to start your seam, and this blue dot here where you're going to aim it. And I find that this ridge of the seam is almost level I like to put this outer side with the point just a hair higher and that tends to give me the angle. So you can see that the ridge of this fold is not perfectly level. It's a little bit uphill as it heads to the right there. And that alignment has been working for me. You'll have to experiment and find your own. All right, and then we'll stitch carefully from the cross here to the dot. And I found that after you do a couple of these, sometimes it's easier to eyeball it than to do the dot because you might have to make some adjustments anyways. And we'll just work our way around doing each corner exactly the same. And keep working your way around, folds. If everything were perfect, these two blue dots would stack exactly perfectly the point of your fabric would be exactly perfect and you would just see the edge of that creased point meeting the ridge of that point. 
but you cannot count on that when working with vintage fabric. So you're going to have to think on your feet and play it by ear a little bit and do a lot of check and adjusting and kind of know what it is you're looking for as an end game and know that you might have to do a little bit of massaging and messing around to get to that point. That is four, and you should have this weird little tuppet thing. And the next thing we're going to do is test this. So you'll flatten this out. I have my point here, stick your thumb in there, press it down, lining the point up with the start of your seam there, and flip the corner through. If you do this a little bit more neatly, I find that the corners pop out a little more neatly and you don't have to manhandle and be rough on your fabric in order to get a nice clean point. And you'll see why. We'll be doing this more than once. So if you get rough on that fabric, it's going to be um, a moving target as you start to make these adjustments. And then I have been using this. This is the Quick Clip. And I was sent this as a sample with, I'm going to say my long arm, and I thought, I'm never going to use this, and I use it all the time. So it's got these ridges here, and you use it to do and undo the safety pins um, that I use to attach quilts to my leaders, and it saves your fingernails, and then I usually keep a chopstick up here, which I have misplaced, and I find that it makes the perfect corner poker because it's got a nice rounded small but still rounded and smooth tip it's not gonna tear through my fabric or be sort of too pointy but it's small enough to get right on into those corners so now I have created a sort of mitered little framed pouch here so here I am back at my nest which is literally just one pivot away from where my sewing machine is and this is where the grid on my little pressing station is going to come in handy. So what I am looking for is a 5x5 five five square and I want these corners to be a nice 90 degree. I don't want them too flat. I don't want them too pointy because when you go to join those, a perfect 90 degree is going to be a lot more helpful. And the more uniform they are in size, the better they're going to join together and the more cleanly they're going to join together. So if I had not poked out my corners, I wouldn't really know the position of my corners. And um, I would not trust your eye on this. I would give yourself, even if you use one of your pre-cut batting squares as a visual and you're just putting it on there and seeing how well you sort of copied that shape. So press on into those corners, make sure they look like you want them to look. They're all the way folded out where they're really going to fall. And then I kind of rotate around. So this side is just about right. And my 90 looks pretty good. So the length on this side, the length on this side, and the angle between them looking good. And you want to rotate around. And if you're not an exact, like if you don't put this on here and it's a perfect exact five by five, you're going to have to work your way around and try to isolate who is out and how are they out. So this looks pretty good. It looks like this guy is a little short. So there's two ways that this can be off. The corner can be too far out or too far in, and that's one adjustment. And then if this upper frame is not laying nice and flat and smooth, then that is another problem. So basically we're talking about the position of this corner and the position of this corner. If this is too tight, it's going to lift up and sort of waffle on you. If it is too loose, you'll have like baggy, poochy up. And then if this corner is past the corner on your guide, it's too big. If it's inside, it's too small. That one is pretty obvious to figure out. So this corner is a little short and I would say a little loose. I can pinch here and get a little excess fabric here. So I might tighten up this inner corner and I need to open up this outer corner. So let's see how we do that adjustment. So don't feel bad if you have to fiddle with this a little bit. 
So we're taking just the corner that I need to adjust and flipping it back to the way it was when we were sewing it. So it's right sides together. And I needed the corner of the square to go out, which means that this side along the fold was too far inboard toward the middle of the piece. So I need this to move outboard a little bit. So I'm gonna place my needle outside closer to the tip of that thread. And then if I want to tighten up the inner edge of the frame, which is this raw edge of the cut piece of fabric, I need the angle of this line to come in more sharply. So there's an angle, if we can see that, between the fold and my line of stitching. So if I want to tighten up this inner edge, I'm going to angle it more this way and take up some of that slack. If this were too tight and giving me that waffle, I would be at too steep of an angle and I would have to ease back the angle of the seam. So there's sort of a starting point and an angle. And those are the two things that I'm adjusting. So I'm going to take my starting point out a little bit. And then I'm gonna steepen up my angle, which means I'm actually still gonna aim for the same point, but instead of being at this angle, it's gonna be a little bit steeper at that angle. Let's give that a try. And you just sort of say, how much did I think I was off by? And you give it a go. And you might have to do this twice. All right, so I think you can see this a little bit better, but also I think I went too far. So here was my original stitch line here. Of course I use white thread, so it's hard to see. And here's my new stitch line here. And I think I went too far. So I'm gonna go in between and do that maybe not quite so drastic as I did in the adjustment. If you're taking these seams in, you don't have to pick them. If you're letting them out, you will have to pick them to free up the fabric. So I am just gonna take this innermost seam that was a little too restrictive and quickly pick that out there's only about an inch of stitching here. It's really not a big deal to rip out a couple of stitches. And you'll notice I have not cut anything yet until I am happy with my work product. There's also, um, if you have that angle wrong, you um, will see, if you have the angle from the fold to the cut edge of the stitching, um, see how this corner is laying nice and flat and it looks like it's a nice 90 degrees. If it looks pointy, then you've got it too steep. Um, and then if it's crooked, you can also sort of see that. You'll see sort of a loose part and then a pinched together part if it's crooked. So you can kind of diagnose what's going on with your seams and make sure that they lay nice and flat. So let's see how I did. Um, you do want it to be nice and square. You do want it to be the right size. Um, and it's nice if it's pretty flat, but this is a very textured quilt design sort of anyways. So if it's a little bit textured, that's not gonna be the end of the world. So I've pressed out my corners and now I've got a pillow that's fitting nice and squarely. My angles are nice right angles. My sides are all pretty much the right distance, right length, I should say. So that is one pretty good pillow. And you can tell not every one of those blue dots landed right on to give me the correct finished product. So that is a good starting point. Put that in your pile and you take another one and for this particular quilt design, you will need 78 of these pillows in assorted colors. And this is a great example of why I chose to do this particular method, which is a little bit more tricky um, because 
What I'm trying to preserve on these vintage blankets is the edge. There's a lot of this beautiful crocheted handwork and that was really the, the detail and the feature of the baby blankets that was being preserved going into the finished quilt. Okay, so that was, let's call it step two, turning your pre-cut seven inch squares using one five inch batting insert as a size sample into these little outer mitered pillow frame units. And I have got an assortment of colors. They were in different blues. These were provided by the customers in different little pinks. So that is step two. Go ahead and make 78 of those. And as you're picking and choosing from your cuts or making your cuts, you want to make sure that you have kind of the 78 assorted colors that you want. So if you start on one color and do all of those, it might be a little bit heavy in that color. So kind of check out your color placement and your color mix a little bit as you're going along and you'll end up with a result you're happy with. Otherwise, um, if you have a bunch of one color, you might not really be able to use those units and have to make more in the other colors anyways. And, um, this process is long enough without having to do things twice. Okay, have a great day, and um, I hope that you're enjoying sewing along this pattern with me and um, finding a lot of use for it. Maybe you're going to use it in a different way, and I'd love to see what you come up with based on these techniques and ideas.